This is an absolutely hideous ornament I bought, which basically it's a glass dome with plastic butterflies inside. They're jam jammed right up against the top. They don't sort of move or anything like that. And uh, it's just, yeah, uh, why would people actually put this in their house? Oh, well. Away they go, because what I really wanted here was the base to put something more interesting in. So uh, I'll be back in a moment once I've put something more interesting in it. Oh yes, that looks a lot nicer now. These are Neon Nixie flowers, and it's actually a little module I built, actually in 1997, which is about almost 20 years ago. And uh, that, uh, it, you know, is so much nicer. It's a nice visual effect, and it's completely random. You'll notice that uh, down here, there's one little Neon down here that doesn't seem to light, and it's just because it is totally random. It will light later on. It will just have a little burst of activity, and uh, it's just really quite attractive little thing. So um, I'll uh, show you the circuitry associated with this. So here's the new ornament uh, in sort of brighter light, so you can see it. And also you'll notice uh, that there's a slight shimmer off the neons and they're not quite as active. It's because it's being swamped the bright light, it takes a while to adjust, but this uh, effect is actually better in the dark. It just seems to be more active in the dark, just because the actual photonic stimulation has an effect. It makes these neons a lock, and, and as you, if you, I actually just move my hand in the vicinity, the, the neons are reacting. Uh, I'll actually pull this off, and you'll hear a slight fuzzing noise. Hear that? It's very quiet, but it's uh, there, and it's kind of hidden by the globe. It's not really audible uh, when, once the globe's on, not to the ear anyway. And here's the circuitry that associated that. Oh, I should also mention, power consumption doesn't even register. Not not even a single milliamp. It's microscopic the amount of power this takes. So it can just be left on 24-7, which is what's going to happen. So here's the, the circuitry for this. It's using what are called neon lamps. Now, I'll just show you a neon lamp. Here's a neon lamp. Used to be, well, they still are, a very common indicator used in switches and sockets uh, because they're before the advent of LEDs and even still now. They're a really uh, easy way of getting a small dot of orange light and all you have to do is add a resistor in series with a neon. It draws very low current, draws about uh, a milliamp or less and gives off a modest amount of light. So uh, what I've actually done here is I've actually put uh, a load of neons in parallel. Basically six, each flower is composed of, well let's, I'll just draw it. It's basically got six petals, and that's composed of six neon lamps. I'll draw the wee pips on as well. And the wires that are coming out one side are all common together. And the wires that are coming, the other wire is common on the other side. And then a bit of wire has been fed through to the front connection and then another to the back to give the sort of stem with the LEDs on it in here. I'll just show you this again, actually, just so you can actually see that now you you know what I'm sort of talking about, the flowers. You can actually see the construction with the little stems going up to them and the little cluster of neons. Now, if these were LEDs and you had a resistor feeding them and you just had a cluster of, let's just draw three, three LEDs in parallel, and they were all matched, then what would happen is they'd all just light and it would be really simple. I mean, it would just be, it'd be quite visual. Uh, all three LEDs would light up, but that doesn't happen with the neon. If you put a, a resistor in line with the neon, or the neons, so I'll draw the neons as circles with little electrodes in them. Dot, which I think indicates the gas. It's just how they're drawn. What actually happens with neons is that uh, this neon lamp here will not light until the voltage exceeds about uh, 90 to 100 volts. And as soon as it, it, so it strikes, strikes, and that just means it sort of lights up at 90 volts. And once it's reached 90 volts, the voltage then drops, so we'll call it hold, at about 50 volts, 50 to 60 volts. So what actually happens when you've got one resistor feeding a load in parallel is the first one that lights, you know, the voltage rises up to about, say, 100 volts and one of them strikes. 
If this one strikes, then it clamps the voltage down and you'll only ever really get one lit. Um, it's, uh, this was a bit perplexing because originally I, I hoped that uh, when I first played about with this that I could just put these little flowers together and just put a resistor in series across the mains and, you know, as they warmed up, the ratification of the gas inside, the heat effect might actually make the resistance increase. And I was basing that on the fact that you get these crackle tubes. You've probably seen them without actually realising what it is. It's basically a neon tube and it's got lots of uh, little... Uh, balls in it or broken glass or little sections of tubing and it's filled with neon and it's just run off an ordinary 50 hertz or 60 hertz transformer and initially uh, when you turn it on between the electrodes the neon gas will just follow a jig jaggedy route through that but as it warms up it seeks alternative routes and you end up once it's fully heated up the Sort of it's little, little little lightning bolts shuddering through the the glass. Now I've said that. If you've if you've seen one before, you'll suddenly realise what it was. If you've not seen one before, next time you see one, you sometimes find them in theme parks or museums or, or displays or on films or whatever. You'll recognise what it is. It's a sort of a crackle tube. It's called neon crackle tube. So I spent a lot of time trying to make uh, these shimmer about randomly. And that included building circuitry that pulsed the wand off very quickly. And in the end, the way I actually did it was I made a very simple relaxation oscillator whereby you've got uh, the live coming in, the neutral, and the live was limited by a very high value, 470k resistor, and the neutral was a diode for rectification. And that charged a small capacitor. 10 nanofarad, which is very small, and it only needs to be rated up to about 100 volts, but in this case I had used what I had, which is actually rated about at least a kilovolt. Uh, then, so the voltage, when you power it up, the voltage uh, on that capacitor, uh, it's DC and it rises um, quite slowly because of this resistor, and then there's a, another resistor, just 1k this time, and then the neon lamp. So what actually happens is that as the voltage rises across this capacitor, uh, the neon will eventually strike and it will discharge the capacitor. It will discharge the point it usually goes out and then it will start charging again. It basically just pulses it, very sharp pulses. Uh, if that was a, if you could actually see that, it's kind of complicated with the fact it's the same way. It would ramp up and then it would drop and then it would ramp up and drop like that. And the reason of the 1K resistor is, if initially the first experiment I didn't use the 1K resistor, I just had the neon connected straight across the capacitor. But what actually happens is all the energy, as soon as it, that reaches 100 volts and it strikes and drops down to about 50, suddenly it's dumping the energy from that capacitor. And that results in sputtering the tube. It blackens the tube very quickly. So that resistor there, uh, after a lot of experimentation, it was just chosen by experimentation, limits the current to the point it won't sputter. Um, and it's worth mentioning, uh, this is a problem that a lot of people with old neon signs uh, wouldn't have realised what was happening. If they ran a high voltage cable inside a, a grounded conduit, let's say a short draw the wee ground thing, and they had the high voltage cable inside because it was safer. And I have to say, in, in the old bad old days, they used to have lead sheathed high voltage cables with neon signs. And this was a bad idea because that actually forms a capacitor in there. And the sheathing of these uh, cables it did make it kind of safer from a fire perspective, but uh, it created a capacitance problem that would rapidly damage the tubes because uh, on each half cycle, the voltage would rise in the neon transform until the tube struck. And uh, because the, it was then forming, especially at such a high voltage, it was forming quite a large capacitor with the cable and the metal pipe surrounding it it would then dump a huge pulse of energy through the neon tube. And the neon tube would light as normal, but the electrodes at the end of the neon tubes um, would very rapidly blacken and sputter and it would make the tubes fail. So that was that's just a wee side point. So this is the circuit. Uh, each uh, one of these feeds the six neons and that's fundamentally it. And that slight noise you heard earlier on is because the capacitors I'm using are ceramic ones 
And ceramic pastors actually make noise when they discharge, uh, particularly when it's discharged a pulse of current. It's a sort of pizza ceramic effect. It makes it flex absolutely imperceivably small amount. But uh, it just uh, makes that slight click noise from the capacitor. Uh, it's quite common in some power supplies, that sort of high frequency noise, and it can be that little capacitor. So that's the circuit. Uh, it's lots and lots of uh, multiples of these. You can see them there at the base. I'll pull this cover off, even though this is lev at mains voltage. And you can see all the little circuits there. There's the capacitors, there's the resistors. There's one diode feeding the lot. So each, each one has the capacitor, the 470k resistor, the 1k resistor, and then the neon flowers. And uh, that's fundamentally it. It's, it's a very simple little circuit, and uh, initially when you build it, uh, it seems to take a while for the neons to just settle in. You know, it might not be terribly active at first, but as you leave it over the over the weeks, or days, or weeks, or hours, or whatever, you know, it just gradually gets more and more active. And at night time, it just goes really sort of crazy. I'll turn the light off here, and you'll see it just instantly starts bursting into activity again. I'll have to uh, brighten that up. So that's great, isn't it? It's just a really visual effect. And the longer that's left, the more random it gets. It, because uh, as the neons light, it seems to change their sort of resistance. So it's a good visual effect. I just think it's really attractive. And much nicer. Um, you'll have to excuse me. I'm just going to swamp the camera of light here. Oh, it's swamped. Oh, hold on, hold on. I'm just trying to set it. Oh, there it goes. Oh, it's still not done very well, has it? Oh. Uh, Rightio, oh, that's better. But uh, yeah, so that's the conversion. I've taken those horrible butterflies out. I've put a uh, neon circuitry in, and it's quite attractive. I think I may have to glue the lid shut though, just in case anybody lifts it off and pokes about, because it could be a wee bit, a wee bit freaky. But yeah, good result. Uh, it looks quite nice.